This could be Singapore in 2040. If all goes according to the government's master plan, no more vehicles that run solely on petrol or diesel. In this exciting future, carbon dioxide emissions coming from vehicles might be cut by almost half. So we're trying to get there. But this is where we are at now. Vehicles and public transport are the second largest contributor to CO2 emissions in Singapore. Only about 5% of our cars today are powered by cleaner energy. What will it take to get to our 2040 goal? Okay, so if I want to buy a green car, what are my options? I am at a car showroom, not to buy a car, but to find out what the green options are. Our hybrid is using this 48 volt battery to assist you with the stop-start function, whereas the full hybrid cars, the battery pack itself can power the entire car. Like conventional cars, hybrid cars have combustion engines powered by petrol but they have batteries which store excess energy generated when the car needs to stop with the engine running. The next car I'm about to see, however, is rather different. Oh, hey, hey, this is moving. Oh, wow. There's no engine. This will be the full electric vehicle. There's, there's nothing. When the customers come here, do they ask for hybrid option or electric option? So usually they will ask what we have in our lineup, mm -hmm. but when they hear the price, usually they will be scared <laughs> off. On average, hybrid cars cost 10% more than conventional cars. Electric cars are even more expensive. On average, they could retail for 25% more than conventional cars. Hi. This Tesla, for example, retails at 220,000 Singapore dollars. Open the door. Oh, wow. Rest in peace. Why are the green cars cost so much more than our conventional cars? These technologies are still quite new. They are not producing as many as conventional models, so the cost per unit is still high. I've never been in an electric car, so I'm taking this baby for a spin. It's so quiet. Yes. Are all electric cars like this? Yes. Oh, OK. Electric cars are far cleaner than the hybrids. They simply run on electricity. So the power is very linear. There's no gears to change. Instead of pumping fuel, you charge a battery. So while driving the car, there are no fumes and zero CO2 emissions. So how is it? Is it comfortable? Yeah, it's super comfortable. It's super fun to drive. Which is why the government is giving out incentives to offset the higher price tag. Electric as well as hybrid cars for personal use already get up to 20,000 Singapore dollars in rebates. These rebates are given based on CO2 emissions and energy consumption. And on top of that, from 2021 onwards, the authorities will give up to 20,000 Singapore dollar rebate on additional registration fee for electric car buyers. The additional registration fee is the tax you pay when you register a vehicle. The new incentive, coupled with existing rebates, could slash the cost of an electric car by around 25% which means the Tesla I was driving would cost $50,000 less. Sales of green cars have been on the rise. Still, they account for only 5% of the nearly 1 million cars in Singapore. Would completely replacing the rest in 20 years be too ambitious? The powertrain, oh. the stability of... Professor Subot Maisalka has been researching green technologies for many years. I'm visiting him at the Future Mobility Solutions Lab for some answers. So the goal for 2040 is to ban all cars that only use fossil fuels. Is that a very far-fetched goal? 
Because at the moment, only about 5% of car owners right. own hybrid right. or 100% electric vehicle. Right. You know? So there are multiple reasons for that. So, so the first reason is there aren't enough uh, makers of electric vehicles that have released EVs into the market. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the news, every uh, vehicle maker has announced that they will move to 100% electric offerings sometime in the 2020s. So with the technology being ready, the more important box that needs to get ticked is the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, every forecast says that by over the next three to five years, the battery costs are going to be dropping so rapidly that the cost of a fully electric vehicle would be the same as the cost of an internal combustion engine car, probably by 2025. Mm -hmm. So if we have cost parity, the reason to not owning an electric car is availability of the charging infrastructure. Can I charge my car in every mall I go? It's a question of demand picking up and the charging points becoming ubiquitous. It sounds to me that demand for electricity will go up. Does that mean now prices of electricity will go up? Actually, it won't. We are in a situation where we can easily accommodate a lot more EVs, plus we're adding solar panels. But we need to watch a couple of factors. I think it is important to understand that EVs are carbon neutral if the supply of electricity is coming from renewables. The car itself is emission free, but it getting is, the electricity may not. That's correct. In places like Singapore, electricity is being generated by natural gas. Mm -hmm. So it is still better to drive an EV than to drive a petrol-based vehicle mm -hmm. because switching to an EV can reduce our emissions by up to 50%. Still, when it comes to reducing our carbon emissions, nothing quite beats public transport. And the plan to phase out engines that run only on fossil fuel will also extend to our buses. This bus is one of the 10 new electric buses that joined our fleet in April. This bus is no regular bus. Me, can you hear that? You can't, right? Because there's no engine. It's an electric bus. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Mr. Lee Jofu. Hi, Ni Hao. Ni Hao. Hi, Ting Sang, sir. Hao. Thank you. Hi. Eco bus. Thank you. Wow! <笑> 哦，这冷气风扇的声音，所以你要的话，我可以尝试把冷气关掉，让你感觉它的宁静。我的感觉是，哎，啊，巴士还没有开嘞。啊，对，还没有开到。哇，OK。Okay, so this is the charging port actually. Yeah, so once you open it, right, it's like a handful actually. It's just plug and play. And here we go. How long does it take for the bus's batteries to be fully charged from 0%? To be exact, it's 2.06 hours. An electric single-decker bus needs an estimated 330 kilowatt hours of energy in a day, which is the daily energy consumption of about 23 five-room HDB flats. If our entire fleet of almost 6,000 buses is electrified, an estimated 2 gigawatt hours of energy is needed per day. That's enough to power around a fifth of the homes in Singapore. Imagine all that electricity that needs to be generated. 95% of Singapore's electricity is generated from natural gas. While natural gas emits less CO2 than coal or petroleum, there is still significant carbon emissions. I wonder, is there a cleaner way to power our vehicles? I'm, I'm not going to get electrocuted, right? Since the 18th century, fossil fuels have been propelling our cars, powering up our businesses and lighting up our homes. Today, coal, petroleum and gas provide for about 80% of our energy needs. and we're paying the price. Singapore has an ambitious goal, 
to phase out vehicles powered solely by fossil fuels by 2040. What we are seeing here yeah, is a Lexus hybrid. But even green cars have their drawbacks. Hybrid cars, while cleaner than conventional cars, still rely on a combustion engine for power and therefore still have tailpipe emissions, harmful to our health and to the environment. Electric cars have zero tailpipe emissions, but require an infrastructure of charging ports. And like any electrical devices, they take a far longer time to recharge compared to refueling conventional cars at a petrol station. Three, two, Enter one. hydrogen. It's literally rocket fuel. NASA has been using liquid hydrogen to propel its rockets. And to my surprise, creating this fuel is no rocket science. It starts with the chemical formula we all know, H2O. Okay, Professor, what do we have here? We are talking about the production of hydrogen uh, that comes from the electrolysis of water. And it just requires such a simple setup? Yes, that's right. So each rod just goes there. So what's going to happen? I'm, I'm not going to get electrocuted, right? I know, no okay. way. Not no unless worries. I touch yeah. the water. Okay, here goes nothing. Electrolysis is the process of breaking down water into oxygen and hydrogen by passing an electric current through it. I see some yeah, yeah. bubbles over there. And just like that, I created an alternative fuel. That is hydrogen gas. Exactly. The bubbles on the left rod are oxygen, the O in H2O. And on the right, we have hydrogen, the H. But wait a minute. Am I not using electricity here to create hydrogen? What is hydrogen fuel? You have a hydrogen. Uh, it's a basically it's a versatile energy carrier. In most of the countries, they're producing hydrogen through a process called steam reforming. You take natural gas, introduce high uh, temperature steam to it, you can crack the bond between carbon and hydrogen, you make hydrogen. But at the same time, you are also emitting carbon dioxide, which is not environmentally acceptable. Mm -hmm. So now we are moving you know, in a different direction now. What we are looking for is the green hydrogen. Okay. So this is where the water splitting comes into the picture. And green hydrogen is the reason why I'm on a boat today to get to one of Singapore's outlying islands. I'm on my way to Samakau Island. Um, most people know it as the Landfill Island, but apparently there are many other projects on the island as well. It's a research project run by French energy company Engie in collaboration with Nanyang Technological University. One of the aims is to make hydrogen purely from renewable energy. This is the hydrogen refueling station. Okay. So you've got hydrogen stored inside, mm -hmm. uh, which is generated by water and uh, renewable power coming from solar panels and wind turbine. Here, the electricity used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen comes from renewable sources. How many solar panels? Uh, how much this patch of solar panels alone can generate enough electricity solar, solar for 50 HTB flats. But in this case, part of it is used to power up this van. It looks nothing like the futuristic sleek vehicles I've imagined, but it runs on hydrogen. It produces only water and heat as byproducts. So, so right now the hydrogen is just being pumped inside the car? Yes. Wow. And uh, it takes the same time to refill your, your, your car. It's about five minutes. Five minutes yeah. from, from an empty tank? Yeah, to exactly, yeah. So right. it's uh, much shorter compared to, to electricity. Can I say that this car is 100% carbon neutral? Yeah, we can say that as long as the, uh, the hydrogen we put into the car is generated with uh, renewable electricity mm -hmm. and water generated on site. I see. There's no carbon emission. Welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. So, am I moving? Yeah. Wow. Without noise. That's it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, are we able to drive this in Singapore on the main land? 
This one, no, unfortunately not. Uh, the driving is just limited to the, to the island, to the, the island. site for R&D purposes. This hydrogen station at Samakau Island is only a pilot project. It may take longer than 20 years for hydrogen cars to appear on our roads in Singapore. But there is a country that's making hydrogen-powered transport a reality. Japan. This is the fuel cell stack where all the magic happens. I'm visiting a country that's making hydrogen-powered transport a reality. Japan. Hi, Joshua. How are you? Welcome to Japan, in a way. Hey, Marcio. Thanks so much for inviting me on this virtual tour. Uh, can you please tell me, are green cars very popular in Japan? Cleaner cars are already a culture in Japan. And today, I'm really excited because I'm going to check out the new generation of green cars. Marcio Edagi is an automotive journalist and TV host. So I thought he would be the perfect person to review the Toyota Mirai, one of just three hydrogen cars that people can buy now in the global marketplace. It's a beautiful car and one of the cleanest cars in the planet. This is the fuel cell stack where all the magic happens. Let's go for a ride. I drove a hybrid before, and it feels pretty much the same. It's very quiet inside. It's super comfortable. It's a very, very easy to handle car. The question is, would I buy this car? Even though it's a no fuel emission, it's an environmental friendly car. Here in Japan, we have only 120 filling stations all over the country. And to be honest, I don't think that's enough. Imagine, there are only about 120 hydrogen charging stations in a country of 126 million citizens. Price is another huge issue. Toyota Mirai costs 100,000 Singapore dollars. That's considered very expensive in Japan. But hydrogen is not the only fuel the Japanese are exploring in their quest to reduce CO2 emissions. At Toyota, they have also developed a different kind of hybrid car that uses electric power and sunshine. It's also around half the price of the hydrogen car. This car can be charged for free at any parking lot, as long as it's sunny. While one solar panel is not enough to generate enough electricity for a full charge, it helps improve the mileage of an electric vehicle between charges. Currently, these cars are available in Japan and some European countries, but have yet to reach Singapore's shores. I have learned that carbon-neutral transportation may not be science fiction after all. What will it take for Singapore to achieve it? To answer this question, I went for a ride with the Transport Minister, Ong Yi Kang, as he test drives an electric car. We have a 2040 target, right? Yeah. To, to uh, phase out uh, cars that run solely on fossil fuels. Yeah. But we're still allowing hybrids. So it's a uh, cleaner fuel. But countries like uh, UK or even the Netherlands, uh, they have 2035 or 2030 targets mm. to have no fossil fuel cars at all, not even hybrids. You know? yeah. So is it like a cop-out for us <laughs> to allow hybrids? <laughs> I think partly because we have a COE system. So we think in terms of 10 years, you see. For Singapore, even for people who like to change their car, they have to sell to somebody who keep it for up to 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that two cycles of COE lifespan, we will have a whole new generation of vehicles that run on cleaner energy, including hybrid. 
So I think it's still fairly, fairly ambitious given our policy of COE. Even for electric vehicles, what produces the electricity uh, can mm -hmm. still be fossil fuel based. Mm -hmm. As an oh. island state uh, with very little sea territory and located in the equator with a lot of clouds, we are actually alternate energy disadvantage. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not easy to generate or solar power and we don't have hydro. So we are a bit disadvantaged. How about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles? Right now, there's none on our roads. Last year, I went with President Halima to Germany mm. and we visited some automobile producers. They said that between battery and hydrogen, the jury is still out. So that's also one of the reasons why we set a longer target because the jury is still out. What exactly is the technology that will evolve? Mm -hmm. Having said that, when our own people look at hydrogen, the infrastructure setup is even more expensive than battery charging. But I think there is possibility of using hydrogen more for fleets. And let's say you run buses or you mm. run fleets. You know. but that means you have a big yard where all your vehicles come back mm. every day for fuel recharge. And that's when you can set up the infrastructure and it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, for vehicles like privately owned vehicles to have hydrogen, it requires a very involved, very heavy investment in infrastructure. Is it not as simple as converting like our petrol stations now to hydrogen filling stations? Well, that's expensive. My own sense, looking at the economics and the infrastructure, probably uh, electric vehicles is a better bet now. Why don't you drive an electric or a hybrid car? Why don't I? Uh, like that car is <laughs> seven years old. Seven years ago, we don't think about EVs, you mm, see. Okay. It's, it's even more environmentally unfriendly when you change your car, when, <laughs> you, when, you're still, when you're still working so well. But of course, in time, when, when I change the car, I'll consider EV. Hopefully, we have more charging points at that time. Today, we have about 1,700 or so charging points around the island. It's very, yeah, few. It's, not, it's very few. So there is a plan that by 2030, we should have close to 30,000 charging points, 28,000. But I don't think it will be 28,000. It should be far more. By 2030, we should have a significant proliferation of charging points, and that will make EV very viable. I've discovered that there is no silver bullet when it comes to alternative fuels. They all have pros and cons. In the race for mass adoption, the hybrid and electric car are currently the crowd favourites. But the conventional hybrid may lose out as exhaust standards get more stringent. Solar energy is clean! But for now, solar panels cannot power a car on its own. But solar electric hybrids may well overtake the market in the future. With zero exhaust too, hydrogen cars are playing catch-up. But with only three car makers rolling out hydrogen models, they look unlikely to win the race for now. In Singapore, we are giving ourselves 20 years to achieve our goal of phasing out cars running solely on fossil fuels. Even then, green cars are only as green as our energy source. And until that can be fully renewable, green cars are not truly carbon neutral. But by switching to greener cars, we will still be able to substantially cut down CO2 emissions. And that's why it matters. <laughs>